What's up everybody, Joy right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Raider 9 because it just came out with another briefing. This one is briefing number 61, SIP Rep. It starts off with saying, uh, attention officers, thank you for joining us for our 61st edition of our bi-weekly development briefing. Today we have a situation report via a variety of subtopics that provide you with a wide variety of the game's current development. Included in this format, we hope to show you some of the more nitty gritty details of our development process. This briefing subtopics include police trailer units, quality of life, improvements to less than lethal equipment, level blocking volumes, level overhauls on farm, and VFX improvements slash optimizations. Furthermore, we are excited to say that we are on track for an expected 1.0 release towards the end of this year, based on the incredible pace of our team's development throughout these past months. I really hope so. Thank you all for your continued patience, along with your considerate reception of our recent PSA in volume 60, regarding still ongoing technical limitations presented by incremental public build updates at this stage. Quality takes time, and we're fortunate to have had the opportunity and support to continue to use our time efficiently over these months. Please keep in mind that the development content depicted in this briefing is a work in progress and may be subject to change in the game's final state. In this briefing, you will see media that illustrates several of these areas of development below. I mean, I guess we'll see. They're doubling down on coming out at the end of the year with 1.0, so I'll hold you to it, Void. You better do it. Don't be mad. We're moving on here. Police trailer units. This is entry team to talk. Suspect secure. Talk to entry team. Roger that. Proceed with caution. Trailers incoming. These above in-game radio communications finally come to life with the new addition of a physical police trailer AI unit that's intended to increase the immersion at the end of the mission. The name trailer refers to the fact that these units safely trail behind the actions of the tactical team, avoiding tactical interference while providing auxiliary support, reminiscent of real SWAT procedures. Our police trailer units arrive to physically extract secured civilians and suspects to safety after you clear a level, removing them from the scene. Is it going to be one of those things where they kind of just like disappear or are they actually going to come in and pick them up and take them out? That's what I really want to know because if it's the former, it's going to feel like, oh, did they get up and run? Sounds like a really cool system. But I have to wonder if it takes away a little bit of the fear of you trying to protect civilians while they're handcuffed. I don't know if that was like really an issue to begin with. I guess we'll see how this works. But moving on here. Although in the previous testing, we had trailers extract subjects to during the active scene, it resulted in some rare but awkward occasions where active suspects would incidentally encounter trailer units. Therefore, in the current state, once all civilian suspects are detained and or tragically deceased, trailers come in and manage the level after your SWAT team's actions carrying detained or deceased civilians or suspects and collecting bagged evidence to take back to the Bearcat vehicle. As a result, you can actually see them doing their job and walking back to the Bearcat, rather than being something that happens off screen. So. I already see two issues with this. I've seen the AI completely like flank me going from one level from the bottom all the way back up to the top. Like let's say in um, Valley of the Dolls, they have flanked me from behind. So what if we cleared out that level on the top floor and all of a sudden those guys come in to like clear it up and then the bad guy comes in from behind from like because he comes up and flanks up from the bottom floor all the way up to the top. What's going to happen there? Another thing is is this kind of just taking away from, you know, people trying to look for weapons and stuff? I really hope that they make a setting because I like picking up those weapons. I know nobody else doesn't like to do it, but I do. But I would really like it if they had like a setting where you can make it so that trailers pick up the weapons also or don't. I hope they thought of that. Or maybe I misinterpreted and the trailers are going to come in once we pack up all the weapons, package them up and drop them. Not entirely sure they didn't really specify here. To me, it just sounds like they're going to come and pick it up and we don't have to worry about it. But I do like the idea of people actually coming onto the scene to pick up the people that were behind you because it definitely alleviate a lot of the stress knowing that there are still civilians in the area that are actively going to get hit if they don't get out of there although i do have to wonder like what is a level exactly because there's like uh let's say the neon nightclub like a majority of that is just like one level are the missions like divided up into one section like once we clear out the front lobby that's when they move in see this is the problem with them not giving us you know updates like we can't test this like wait do we have to clear out the entire bottom level in order for them to come in and clear it out or how does that work so this just le i mean it's it sounds cool on paper but honestly it leaves me with a lot of questions but anyways let's push on here the next thing we got is less than lethal quality of life improvements we have made numerous quality of life improvements for less lethal equipment by realistically rationalizing the unique niches they fill and the in-game tactics they're involved in this is particularly emphasized by our more nuanced approach to the usage of cs gas the vks pepper ball launcher and pepper spray to make them more distinct and realistic hashtag bring back pepper ball paintball gun hashtag cs gas from a technical perspective you 
used to perform similarly to the flashbangs, statistically stunning individuals within the area of effect for a period of time. However, we have changed them to operate more appropriately as area denial equipment. Wait, that's what they were supposed to be used for? Huh. Putting it like that, it seems like something out of freaking CS2. We love smoke and it's hard to see. Area denial. But yeah, interesting. To achieve this, CS gas clouds last longer. 30 to 45 seconds. No longer emit audio that alerts suspects. And serve to primarily flush out subjects from dangerous areas. The previous form of CS gas also used a tick-based damage system, which was unoptimized, where this new system avoids that issue. Lastly, our improved gas logic system allows CS gas to work through rat holes in walls and around corners to a certain extent. This is done by drawing paths from the grenade to the target and then determining whether the target is in range. With the VKS Pifferball Launcher, you can expect a major change to its ammunition function and a tactical usage change to indirect fire instead of direct fire. The updated OC balls, referring to Oleracin, Capsism, or Pepper Resin, inside of them are less effective upon direct impact but instead leave small OC powder clouds that last for around 20 to 25 seconds at an impact. NPCs and players that walk through these clouds are affected by them, allowing you to lay down less than lethal suppressive fire or flush out AI in a precise manner. We found that the pepper spray was sometimes too powerful for use against armed suspects in combat context. Now instead of a full stun, suspects who are affected by pepper spray will cover their eyes, experiencing an accuracy reduction and have a morale drop. In this blind state, they are still capable of shooting the player up close. The player's response to any chemical agent is now less extreme under current changes. Instead of turning the screen red and taking control of the player by making the camera sway all over, it only makes the screen red and blurs the screen as if with tear-filled eyes, and the player character makes audible coughing sounds that alert suspects as an aggressive noise. Hmm, interesting. I think the problem with less than lethal weapons, at least for me, it just makes the game like too easy. That's why I hardly use them. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't, it's just, you know, you want to clear a level ridiculously fast, you just use the less than lethal weapons. I like that it's an option, but I hardly use it because I like the challenge, you know? So I guess this gives a little more challenge to it, I guess. So that's pretty cool. Uh, moving on to the next thing here, we got blocking volumes. The usage of volumes is an invisible yet crucial element of ensuring quality gameplay on a given game level. These volumes come in a variety of forms, including blocking volumes, which optimize player AI movement and visions, vision volumes, which help facilitate fair engagements with AI. Blocking volumes are used to optimize movement through a level of guiding the player and AI around obstacles, enhancing immersion by providing smooth navigation around them. No, the player capsule refers to the collision boundaries of the player's movement that interact with the game world. And here we got our first GIF here, and you can see him just walking into the wall right here. It actually explains that a pillar without blocking volumes around it is causing the player capsule to get stuck on the pillar's edge. And then we see the second GIF that's underneath it that shows quite the opposite. See how he like goes around it? Like he kind of just like bounces off of it instead of getting stuck. Underneath it, it says, with a simple blocking volume like this, it'll allow the player capsule to automatically slide out of this corner in close quarters, which is more natural for general movement. Yeah, and it looks pretty good, not gonna lie. Moving on here, but underneath this, it says, other than movement optimization, blocking volumes are also used to keep players and AI away from climbing certain props that would, in most cases, get them stuck. Yeah, so I've definitely seen friendly AI get stuck on the walls a lot, so this is a great change. But moving on here, we got two pictures. The first one looks like... Uh, um, I want to say that this is that crack house map, but I can't I could be wrong See the garbage cans that are clipping through the truck here. Come on boy. What the heck? It's mostly like outside of the map or something So this is all the collision stuff. I assume underneath this it says the navigation in this area is very uneven and bumpy Which would result in the AI getting stuck on these trash bags is void interactive trying to say that the AI is trash Oh my god, let me get like the blocky version. This is interesting. I don't think they explain what this is I think this is just like the actual collision blocks right what the ai can actually hit it's interesting underneath this is another picture it's the same one but there's a bunch of lines here volume blocking optimized for terrain so that we can solve both collision and ai navigation issues mm -hmm, i see i see i know that you know programming ai has been a pain in the ass for like every developer i've talked to like, nobody really seems to get it right but they get pretty damn close i don't even know if there really is like a right thing right because you're just always gonna run into problems with this type of stuff 
But anyways, visible volumes are used in areas where the AI is able to see the player, yet it is excessively difficult for the player to spot the AI. These areas are often darkly lit and plenty of visual concealment that gives an AI aiming system too much of an advantage compared to the player. And we got this picture here of what looks like maybe the new map. This looks underground. It's either the crack house map or it's Coyote, which I'm guessing is Coyote, but I don't know. Not sure what any of this stuff means. Oh, this is the kick. This is the shoot the door hinges off. Uh, just open the door plainly. Use the battering ram. Pick the door. Open the door. Like, creak it. I'm not sure what this means. Look underneath. Put the thing explosive. Okay, so I, I know what pretty much all of this stuff is. Except for this. Maybe this has to do with the AI. Not too sure. But underneath this, it says, in this example, in Coyote, oh, I was right. We have some wood planks that have some tiny physical gaps in them, which are blocked with visibility volumes. So that's what this is all about. Interesting. And then we have this gigantic looking mess, which I think is dealership, right? See what it says underneath. A view of completed level volumes on the level dealer. Oh, so this one's completed and this one is not. Or maybe this is completed. I don't know. Moving on from that, let's see. You got farm level overhaul. Halls. Well, I never really saw what it looked like before, so I guess they're overhauling it? Or is this Teresa Farm? Is that what they're talking about? Or is this a completely different level? I don't even know. Farm is one of our many pre-existing levels that have undergone significant improvement to better suit our story and widespread gameplay intentions, both of which we will discuss more in the future. For now, you can see a variety of changes subtly manifested within the construction of this eerily beautiful compound, or Dito creeps in every distant crevice. We got the first picture here, let's see. So, I think right off the the bat the weirdest thing about this picture is that there's like a humanoid but it's a plant i've noticed that a lot in these uh pictures of this map or a map that look like it there's like weird plant looking people that are kind of just standing around actually there's another one right here kind of you know hidden a little find that a little strange something doesn't seem quite right here this house hasn't been groomed in ages but uh, underneath this it says the main garden of the compound is inhabited by humanoid hedges and quiet picnic tables so they pointed that out which makes me think that they use freaking dead bodies to stand them up and put stuff on them like i don't know it's kind of wild to be honest but moving on to the next thing here we got interesting looking pictures this looks like a tree woman she's like in the tree it's just been carved out someone's screaming someone looks dark what is that another these are all women obviously but well, something funky is going on except for this one i don't know what that is looks like a weird spider looking thing no that's a face there's an ear right there and then there's a face but there's like some weird looking vines that are surrounding it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some weird looking stuff here. Man, if only I was more interested in the lore to care about this type of stuff. But underneath this, it says portraits are placed amongst the leaves. I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty obvious. But anyways, another picture here. Let's see. We got greenhouses. I'm trying to think. Is this Teresa Farms? I feel like it is. This has to be, right? What other farm is there? This is a new one. Got some graffiti down here. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I'm not seeing any more tree people. At least not off the bat. I don't see anything over here. I don't really see anything like out of the ordinary aside from, you know, trees just like growing on the buildings. Nature retaking society at some point. But uh, yeah, underneath this it says greenhouse for self growth. This is going to be just like simple descriptions. Let's see, we got like a garage here with this next one. We got rims, some kind of uh, oil maybe, boxes, cages, cages. Those are some big cages. What the hell are they hauling? Humans? What the hell are these? I, don't know, I forget what you call them, uh, confetti or drapes or I don't know what they call this vehicle looks like it's being worked on but uh, yeah underneath this it says sunlight spills around the garage is parked white van mm -hmm. it's interesting We're moving on to the next picture here we got an underground area this has to be Teresa farm right i got some barrels back here so maybe but i think this whole area is new interesting looking symbols it's like the second time we've seen that don't know what it means i don't see anything like out of the ordinary but if you want to put it on the comments then let me know so i'm gonna be moving on here then the next thing which is vfx improvements and optimizations at the same time time while we're making improvements to the fidelity of visual effects we are also optimizing our related systems so that they run as efficiently as possible among just a few the vfx improvements we've worked on are muzzle flare explosion effects including increased performance for c2 breaching new vehicles and increased granularity of our existing vehicle destruction plus optimization awesome for optimization we are generally trying to reduce the number of draw calls draw calls are what occurs when your computer performs instructions to render draw 
draw a given graphical element and how to render it. In the video below, they have updated effects for muzzle flare, new oxygen tank explosion, optimized C2 explosion, and the updated CS gas effect, which has improved performance as well. Cool. Keep in mind that due to in-engine performance, demand of development tools overheat this footage captured as a decreased resolution, and that development build performance is generally worse than in a shipping, meaning eventually intended for public build. Okay, so it's not perfect is what they're trying to tell me. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. That's pretty cool. Things definitely look a lot more, you know, natural and realistic. Definitely dig it. Moving on here, we got a GIF of what looks like new cards that are coming into the game. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh my god, even big trucks and stuff too. Oh snap. It's quite a bit. Underneath this, it says, showcasing many of environmental arts new vehicles that have been added to the game, destructible, customizable by car and more. And then underneath this, we got a new video that says destructible vehicle. Let's take a look, see. They did not need to do this, by the way. They just, you know, went all out and made it so you could punish cars, basically. That's pretty freaking cool, not gonna lie. But underneath this, it says, The upgraded and optimized vehicle destruction system with the added ability to destroy all rear view mirrors, gradually shatter windows, lights with improved alarms, and even doors. That's pretty cool, not gonna lie. Lastly, improper scaling of vehicle size has been fixed, and we've optimized static Vista vehicles to avoid draw called drain. Vista vehicles are those that are outside of the playable space which now use just one material type rather than non-vista destructible vehicles that have texture meshes specific for each door etc in conclusion we hope you enjoyed this broad look into these various aspects of ready or not's development process as we near our expected 1.0 release towards the end of the year this briefing is by no means an exhaustive list of the changes being made to the game and in the coming months we can't wait to share even more of what our immensely talented development department has done speaking of which reporting an a APB that we're officially now in the season to double check your corners and watch your team six during these particularly spooky months stack up and stick together officers we might just have some small after shift treats for you and your teammates on us in fact here's a sort of treat now before we sign off and then we got two of uniforms that we can use maybe custom uniforms it seems medium stuff and heavier stuff bdr tack cool we're getting a lot of cool cosmetics pretty nice it says underneath this that the cosmetic options to choose from such as a version of a swat officers impromptu rapid response uniform next to the bdr tack uniform a u.s special operations unit intended to conduct high stakes operations in scenarios similar to coyote interesting this is very cool looking not gonna lie but uh this concludes our 61st development briefing be sure to tune in next time for more development news they want to thank Zach for the gorgeous photos of farm, Tisa for providing the level vehicle media, VMAM for much of the VFX media, and to all of their many developers who contributed pieces of their hard work and knowledge to this briefing. Very cool, very awesome. I still have like a lot of questions when it comes to this stuff here. Uh, which brings into mind as to why we're not able to test some of this stuff because I feel like we're gonna have some issues when it comes out I mean, we were probably gonna have issues whether it did come out or not But I guess we'll have to see when it comes out. But what are your guys thoughts? Let me know be sure to like and subscribe do all that jazz and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye
I would just like to take the time to thank my amazing supporters, starting off with Fear Operative, Brigador24, Divine Demigod, Hazel, True Forever, Iggy. If you're someone that would like to join this list, become a member or join the Patreon to keep the channel going. Thank you all for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.